Goal Zero 150, is it still relevant for 2021? Let's find out. Alright, so the Yeti 150, this is a very versatile, very small solar generator. So, how versatile is this? You can charge it from your DC cigarette lighter in your car, you can use your regular wall outlet, AC power, and then you can use the solar panel. This is what makes it versatile, that solar panel. So what is this for? This is for tablets, phones, power banks, and lights. And this is how we use it. Power banks and our power tools. So what is this not used for? What this isn't used for is big appliances, medical uses like CPAP machines. All right, so who's this for? Let's start with the guys who count ounces for their equipment, the through hikers. There's no way. This is just way too big. They need something smaller just for their small equipment. Now, the day hikers. The day hikers are going to come back to a base camp, so yes, this is good for light duty. What, the, what about the multi-day hikers? Yes, that's good too. Just be careful of the temperatures that you're going to be leaving this in, cold or hot. Uh, hunters. The hunters, if you're by yourself or take a partner with you, this is good for, again, small electronics. What about car campers? This is excellent for car camping. It acts as a second battery so you don't run down your starter battery. RVers. I'm going to say no to RVers because this is way too small. Way too small. RVs take up a lot of power. Now, spoiler alert. Preppers, yes. This is very relevant for 2021. Yes, it is. Why? It's versatility and it's serviceability. The ability to change the batteries, change the fuses, make it relevant in today's time. Okay, so let's go over the nomenclature and the specs of the Goal Zero Yeti 150. So it comes with this wall charger at 45 watts. At 45 watts, it'll charge it in six hours. We couple this with a 100 watt solar panel and will, it will charge it in less than two and a half hours. This has a max input of only 60 watts, only 60 watts. This is a lead acid battery, which to us is an advantage because of how, it, how serviceable it is. Okay, so let's go over the cigarette lighter here. The max output on this is 120 watts, and you can use this for pretty much everything under 120 watts. What we're going to go over next is going to be the USB port, and this charges at 10.5 watts. So it's good for lights, phones, most phones that are under 10 and a half watts. Okay, and the last one is going to be your wall outlet AC. And this is going to be charging at, uh, at 80 watts. Okay, so what we're going to do next is a detailed assembly of the, the unit itself. So we're going to go from solar panel all the way to go zero, all the way to who benefits. So we're going to take our third party solar panel here, and it's going to come with MC4 connectors. Most of them do. And then you're going to buy this from goal zero. This is an MC4 to eight millimeter connector. You're going to take the positive, which is the male end, and then the negative, which is the female end. You cannot get these wrong. You cannot put these together wrong. So positive first and it just clicks in. You're going to take the male end of this, put a female end. That's connected. So this part right here is my light bulb moment. This is where I had the most problems and no one had detail assemblies of that. And it's that easy. It is that easy. So you're going to take this male end and you're going to go to your goal zero and there it is. You have power now from your solar panel. So what you're going to do, take your battery from your, from your tool and then come on over here and guess who benefits? The puppy. Okay. 
And we got this, these two batteries on Ryobi days with the fan. One fan, two batteries, and that was $100. Now, this is 150 watts only. These both batteries are 75 watts each, which equals to 150. So this actually, this, these batteries actually double my capacity with just this unit alone is 300 watts. So what we're going to demonstrate now is Anne putting this together. She's only seen me do it, so she's going to demonstrate it for the first time. Okay, go ahead. So she's going to take the y, y connector, MC4 to 8 millimeter adapter from Goal Zero. Then she's going to put it on the 30 foot cord, which is also 8 millimeter. She's going to plug it into the Goal Zero. And on bonus round, what she's going to do is use this tool to power up the Ryobi fan for Roxy. All right, good job. Okay, so our solar panel is actually discontinued. But this is the one I would recommend for you, this 100 watt Renogy solar panel. The price is right, and you can wait for this to go on sale. Okay, so you're going to have to call Goal Zero for this. This is that MC4 to 8 millimeter adapter. They just want to tell you that you have to set this up in parallel. The way we've been using it is this one panel. So, yeah, just call them and then you can order it. And then this 8, this eight millimeter extension, 30 foot extension cable, you can get this almost anywhere but the price is going to be the same, okay? Okay, so the pros. The pros are going to be that this is a very small, lightweight unit that does what it's supposed to do. Doing the research on this, I kind of figured out that this battery is actually bigger than what Goal Zero was telling us. So this is marketed as the 150, the battery in here is actually 168. Kudos to Go Zero. That way I don't have to try to figure out what else are they hiding. They actually overbuilt this, which is really nice. Now, the way we use this is we basically charge our tool batteries with it. So I get about around 500 watts with those tool batteries a day. Now, the average cost of a kilowatt in the United States is 11.5, or no, I'm sorry, 10.5. So I save around, let's say, 5 watts, it's 5 cents a day. Is that worth it? No, it isn't worth it. Now, the peace of mind is worth it to me, but is it going to pay for itself? No. So in February, my buddy actually lost power inside his house. So he had to go to a hotel near the office that cost them around a hundred dollars a day so when it comes to money that he had to pay seven hundred dollars that week and if you do the cost of this it would have been two hundred dollars for the unit two hundred dollars for the solar panel another hundred dollars for the wires that's five hundred dollars so he would have saved two hundred dollars on hotel costs I think that this could have prevented him from actually getting that hotel room nearer to the office. And here's why. He could have heated up his house with the fireplace and he could have met all of his small electronic needs with this, preventing him from actually getting that hotel room. All right, so the biggest pro to this is able to get the battery from Amazon, Goal Zero's website, or your local battery shop. That is the biggest pro. And the reason for that is any lithium unit, you're gonna to have to send back to either Jackery or Goal Zero. And that's gonna be what, it, the quickest is gonna be a two week turnaround time. Well, with this one, you saw how fast I can change out the battery. So that is a pro. The fuse, all I have to do is go to the glove compartment of my truck to change the fuse. So the serviceability of this, limited, but that's what I'm using it for is very essential for prepping. All right, so the cons. The weakest part of this unit is the monitor. It doesn't have any black light on there. It has no input, it has no output, which is 
a humongous disadvantage. The other part of it is that the input is only 60 watts. The output here is at 80 watts, so there's a discrepancy there. The other part, too, is that I we're, we're going to put the video up for you with, where there's a discrepancy is that when, I, when this is at 100% and I put in my tool battery to charge it, it goes all the way down to 40. And that right there is discrepancy. There's something wrong with the charging output of that, and I'm not sure why. It cannot drain that battery fast enough. All right, so this unit, it's ancient. It has not received an upgrade. So go zero, listen up. Your input port needs to be 100 watts. Make it MPPT, okay? For your display, give me an input output so I know what solar is coming in. That's very essential. You need to add a USB-C port, okay? And for your AC inverter, give me pure sine wave. What you guys are doing right, don't change the battery. Still make it that 168 watts. So I'm hoping that the Prepper community actually sees how serviceable this is after watching this video. All right, let's go over the serviceability of the unit. What we're gonna be doing is taking out the battery, the fuse, we're also gonna reset it because of that mistake um, with the AC earlier on. You're gonna take out these four screws right here. Alright, so here's the beautiful part of this unit, how simple it is. You're going to take the positive off first, you're going to take the negative next, and this battery, they actually change um, their supplier. I think it's Vision now. Okay, so what we're going to do next is going to be the fuse. And that's it. I'm not an engineer, but this looks a lot simpler than the other units. Put it back. And this also is going to reset it too. Positive first. And again, it's going to be like, it's going to spark and there's the reset. It's just simple. It's very simple. Four screws back on. function check. All right, so let's address some of the shortfalls on this, right? So this is what I find that was helpful to me and hopefully it's going to be helpful to you. So on the output side, I'm going to use a kilowatt. And that way you can find out what the output is on this. There it is. Second, I got this multimeter that's going to show you the amperage coming off of a USB. 
and there you go. So you can get the output from your AC outlet and also your USB-A outlet. All right, so in conclusion, would I buy this unit? Obviously, the answer is I already did with our own money. Would I buy it again? The answer is actually pretty surprising. The answer is no. I would actually go with the bigger brother, the AGM version of it, the 400. And the reason is I want to see what those inputs do, the input and output. So that way I can discharge it and charge it the way I want to. Now, I will attest to this Goal Zero product, the 150. It is very versatile. I have cooked it, I have frozen it, I have depleted it on accident several times, and I am very happy with this unit. Whether you get the 150 or the 400, you will have a very durable and awesome unit. All right, so that's it for this episode. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and please join us on Patreon. All right, so only one trick this week, okay? We're going to try to find out pure sine wave versus modified sine wave with the equipment you already have. So you get this standard issued to you if you're Filipino, this box fan, okay? All right. Don't mind the dirt on it. Okay. Listen to the hum. Okay. Now... Modified sine wave. Do you hear that hum? That is modified sine wave. So if you have a box fan or you got issued one of these for being Filipino, try that trick. Have a great week.